What can I do for you, Tex? Sorry, I haven't heard anything about that. Oh yeah, I know Beak. If you want to talk to him, you might try hanging out around Koi Tower. I walk up the steps to Koi Tower and spot a small figure lurking in the shadows. In the half-light, I can see only the person's profile, but it's definitely Beak. As I walk towards him, he glances around, then approaches me warily, like a vegetarian sizing up a pot pie. What are you staring at? You must be Beak Norris. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's me. But I ain't smelled you before. Who are you? I'm a friend of Chelsea Bando. You told me I could probably find you nosing around up here. Yeah, yeah, Chelsea. Good egg. Nice looker. So, uh, what do you want? I need information, and I'm willing to deal for it. What's that? Deal? Well, I'm listening. What you got? Okay, I can use this. My nose has started sagging lately. Makes it hard to breathe. Now, what kind of info are you looking for, huh? I can't help you there. Chelsea! Hmm, smart girl and a real looker to boot. She's got a cute little nose. I haven't got any info on that. She runs that pizza place with her husband, Sal. I don't know much about her. A true Italian nose, though. He lets his wife run the pizza joint. I don't know what he does. Though I've heard some things about who he does. <laughs> you can tell he drinks a lot by that snaz of his. I can't help you there. I know a little about him. Runs a pretty successful P.I. business. Rook's pawn shop was robbed by a two-bit crook named Mick Flem. He and his girlfriend have knocked off half a dozen pawn shops over the past month. The girl goes to a pawn shop and hawks a bracelet for a decent amount of cash. Then Flam breaks into the pawn shop and steals the bracelet, along with anything else he finds. I think he's dead, and I'll bet Mick Flam had something to do with it. Word was the two of them were smuggling illegal novelty items from Hong Kong and Rusty Cross Flam. Ever since Rusty disappeared, Flam has had a terrible fear of clowns. Bozophobia. I once saw Flem pretty drunk, and he said he had nightmares of Rusty's ghost coming back to haunt him from the grave. He was completely terrified. The bracelet is the bait Mick Flem uses for the pawn shop robberies. Big trouble. It's causing mutant blood to boil, and I don't want to be around when the bullets start flying. Anyone with a hunker like that can't be all bad. Malden's no rocket scientist, but I hear that he's not on the take. I've helped him out a couple of times, so he leaves me alone. McFlam's rap sheet would take a day to read. He's a fat scum, and he's an idiot to boot. That's why he's always getting caught. He's been busted for burglary, mail fraud, arson, you name it. Everyone knows he operates out of the Snow White warehouse, but don't tell him. Oh, I'm nobody. I just try to keep my nose clean and my ear to the ground. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Or was that vice versa?
Looks like a welcome mat, but when it's on the doorstep of a novelty shop, you can never be too careful. Rusty the Clown's Novelty Shop. Close down a- Whoa, a key. Hmm, it's all locked up. Hmm, it's all locked up. These weapons are all made of plastic. All bark and no bite. They're completely useless. This wig probably sells well during the Bay Area Yodeling Festival. A mask of the king? That's blasphemy! This wig must be quite popular with shy people. Oh, well, this wig would even make someone like me look glamorous. Hmm. Maybe this key fits in that employee's only door. Just a couple of empty old packing boxes. Hmm. Cool. A plastic dark crossbow. It'll make a nice addition to my non-violent weapon collection. Looks like my fourth grade teacher. Well, this must be Mr. Grimm. He's a reaper. Oh, this is a scary mask. Why, it's Mr. Sloppy Lasagna Eater. I'll bet this is a real popular mask. Wow, the limited edition Daryl Hannah wig and mannequin set. Apparently, Rusty was very fond of empty cardboard boxes. It's a rusty clown life-size doll. Wow. It's a dead ringer for... Oh, no pun intended. Whoa! For a second there, I thought someone had decapitated Inspector Burns and left his head on the floor. What a great mask. I have to admit it. Rusty had a fine selection of novelty items. Well, I have no idea what I'd ever do with a stacking ring, but what the heck. Well, that's not gonna work. That door leads out to the street. Why in the world would Rusty keep a barrel of toxic acid? Oh, lordy. Well, this 
this is where Rusty ended up. What a way to go. And I'm willing to bet he didn't crawl in here on his own. Someone murdered him. Posters in here tell you more than you'd ever care to know about film processing. A plastic suction dart can be formidable ammo in the hands of an expert like myself. A balloon strategically located near the water faucet. Looks like Rusty didn't go down without a fight. Ooh, a small nozzle. Probably a helium dispenser used for filling balloons. <laughs> Looks like some kind of in-house television. Hi, kids. It's me, Inspector Burns. And as we all know, fire can be our friend, but fire can be our foe. So many times, fires start so carelessly. And what can fires do? Fires burn you. Never, never light matches. No, no, no. Fire is dangerous. Fire made me look like this. Do you want to look like me? No, no, no. Don't look like Inspector Burns. Don't play with matches. Uh, Inspector Burns. I always thought he was a freak, but the kids love him. So does Ardo.